Ooh, looks like I'm live. See if this works. Hey, looks like I am live. Anybody hear me? Test, test, test. Ah, okay. All right. Ah, okay. Let me turn this off. Setup is a little different today, so excuse the vague unpreparedness. Find something a little experimental. Oh, I did that wrong, didn't I? There we go. Ah, all right. Look like people are coming in the chat. Microphone. Let's put this microphone somewhere else. You're going to hear some noise for a second. Uh. I don't really need to replace this microphone clip. I'm not doing a job. Let's try that. All right. Okay. So. I am live. <laughs> How's this? Been playing free to air satellite. Oh, huh. All right, everybody. everybody. Hello. Another one of my last second, last minute decisions to, I'm not even on the screen, am I? The, Looking at a different monitor. I can't see the hello. Uh, there we go. Screen blanked out on the camera. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah, it's a weird setup here. Okay. So I'd set up using my auxiliary bench here to show you the start of a new kit that I'm working on for a review. This will be in the some future issue of Model Aviation Magazine. This is another kit, as in the, you get a box of wood and you've got to glue a whole bunch of stuff together to make a plane. Uh, this one's called the 109 behind me. And uh, this is pretty interesting. And I thought, hey, wait a minute, since I'm gonna start working on this nice Saturday evening, that I didn't invite you guys to kind of look over my shoulder as I work on this. I don't know how far I will be getting tonight, but hey, well, you know, I need to start on it because I need to get it done by sometime next month. So I uh, thought I was uh, actually had some free time, which has been in short supply lately, very short supply, but I won't go into that. Uh, so I thought, hey, I got some time. Let's get this going and get on it. And I thought, hey, let's maybe my other live shows for building stuff I thought would bore the, the, the bejesus out of people. It didn't, surprisingly. And people said, hey, I like you doing that. I don't know why, but I figured, oh, what the heck? Uh, worst comes to worst is you just change the channel. And worst comes to worst for me is I actually accomplished something. So uh, whether you watch it or not is up to you. But I will be here. I will enjoy your company. I'll take a, I set up my phone. Huh, something fell down over there. Uh, take a look at the chat every once in a while. If you guys are welcome to, to ask me anything or talk about stuff or ask questions. Uh, but I'm going to get started on this old school model works. Check out, I put the link, I think, in the description. Uh, these guys have actually built quite a, they have quite a library of models. In fact, I did build another one called the Javelin. It's also a subject of a um, review. Uh, a couple years ago, maybe a year and a half ago. Uh, really nice model, really well engineered. Uh, it's, in fact, it's hanging up right there. You can't see it, of course. Uh, but 
And so I was offered to do another review. And this one is interesting. I don't know if you can see it very well. It is a very standoff, fun scale model of the Messerschmitt ME or BF 109. This is it's all wood. It's got sort of a, a thickened profile uh, fuselage cross section. Uh, it's I call it a two and a half D. Uh, this one will be it can be electric or glow powered. This one will be electric. In fact, I've got electric goodies over here. And it is all balsa wood and sheeted. It looks pretty nice. It looks very durable. I like it because it's got the squared off wing tips of the earlier model 109s, um, known for fighting in the Battle of Britain and the Spanish Civil War, and maybe early on into World War II. I always thought the, the squared off one looking ones were a little more sleeker, a little more sinister looking. You know, they are a Nazi airplane after all. Uh, and I thought it was, if you're going to have an evil looking airplane, it, it, this one looked more evil than the later models, which were kind of beat with an ugly stick. Uh, so I thought, hey, why not invite you guys that kind of look over my shoulder? And I'll start. In fact, I've already started putting the plans out on the table. Cleaned off this table. It was junked up, so it was nice and clean. Uh, I'll go over a little bit, just a couple other things while people join in. I got some stuff from... Uh, innovative designs. Oh, I should have put their link in the chat as well. Uh, they, uh, I have a battery. This one will be a 3S uh, 2200 battery in it. They have a whole series of uh, power systems and batteries. They call them the badass. And of course, it's a it's a double entendre because um, it's actually a, a donkey, an ass, so to speak. Uh, that is uh, on the cover with muscles, giving you a, a little real beefcake look. And uh, he's got so oh, he's got FPV goggles. I just noticed that on his head. Uh, so you look him up, innovative designs. I don't know if you can see that. If it's in focus or not, it may not be in focus. Uh, so um, I'm trying to remember to put a thing up in the chat. They have a whole series of this. I think this is the speed controller. Uh, yeah, there's a kind of nice looking speed controller in here. Uh, it is programmable, if I remember. Oh, I'm going to put some connectors on it. Uh, I think I've, I've had some stuff from them before, ran really well. I think I got a programmer somewhere in a drawer. I got to go look up. Uh, and I look at the motor. I don't think I really look at the motor too much. This is, I think they call for a 300 something watt system. Uh, I think it's on the box here. 350 plus watts. So, uh, half a horsepower-ish. And so, here is the motor. Um, kind of nice, your typical outrunner brushless motor. So it's pretty nice. It's got some, some lines in it. And it's a 1,080 kV, a 2820 for dimensions. Uh, seems pretty well made. Got a nice, nice big thick shaft. It's got, it's got to be like five or six millimeter shaft on it. Uh, I can you know, feel a little bit of cogging, a bunch of poles, and some odds and ends. So uh, not too bad of a, of a setup. You can front mount, supports a rear. Does it come with it? Yeah, there it is. So there's a rear shaft too. So you get the option of the front mount shaft or a rear mount with a shaft. So yeah, not bad. Uh, yeah, about the same. And some of your other goodies, connectors, cross mount. So that's the power setup. This is what they recommend for it. And so you gotta like these little boxes. This is some pretty snazzy box. It's like, uh, you know, getting jewelry. You got the, the motor fits in there with a slot. You got a felt cover. You've got a little cover. And it's like, you, did, you, did you buy a necklace for your girlfriend or wife or is it a motor system it's it's pretty funny so anyways uh i think the whole setup i got some prop swings at eight was a 10 inch 10 inch prop it's neat that apc has these black props and i really haven't seen these out in the wild at the hobby stores they sell the gray ones but apparently they have a whole series of black electric props as far as i can tell they're no different than the gray ones they're just black which is pretty cool uh, and so I got several different sizes of black props. Uh, yeah, so this whole setup, 10.7, the 10.6, 
and a 10H. So I get to try out a few different things. That's it for uh, all the stuff here. And a spinner. Look at that. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how it flies into different props. And different motor. Bill's setup, they says, supports 3S to 4S. And here's a box of stuff. I'm going to put this over on the side. Uh, I am going to see if I can put this over here. Uh, so I can see the chat easier. Kind of off in the distance. There we go. All right. Anything? Well, Miller, Matt. I heard of blacks are soft and gray. Well, Matt, I have no idea. What? Did it freeze up? Uh, so I don't know. Um, I haven't heard if there's any difference other than just the color, but if there is a difference, somebody in the chat can correct me. I am going to, all right. I'm not quite sure how much you can see. I might move the camera very slightly. Uh, uh, let's see, you can see the whole plans. There we go. Okay, so I hope that you can see this well enough. I know it's, the camera's a little bit far, uh, but you can see the whole plans. So it's nice to have two sheets of plans. I'm going to start pinning them down here. Pin that down, pin this down. Got these nice little pins. Pin the plans down first, and I lost one. And oh, here it is. All right, let me get my chat back up here. Yep, it disappeared. There we go. Oh, okay. Oh, somebody's asking about the wingspan. Good question. 37 inch wingspan. The no landing gear, you just hand launch it, just throw it up in the air. There's some videos of it flying. It looks like it's really, really easy to hand launch. Of course, it's all laser cut wood, which I'll start getting out in a second. Um, and hopefully I have everything I need. I've got glue. I got some Starbond glue. I've got both the thin and uh, medium. I got some kicker. I got some thick in the fridge if I need it. And I got the, some aerosol kicker. I got a knife. Got a block. Got a measurement device. Got a knife. I've got the cutoff saw. Oh, I got a new thing. I went to a swap meet and came home with this little guy. This is, uh, it's just got the sticker on it. Got it for five bucks. And I almost missed it because I thought it was something else. And some guy was looking at something else. And I was kind of poking around because it resembles, but it's a little cutting tool so you you put something in here beside your finger and you can it's got a knife on there you can chop off things real quick and easy uh like little sticks of wood or something and it has a little angle gauge on it so you can cut at different angles 45 degrees it's graduated and uh so it's called a meter cut and just a little wood it's pretty simple but i've always actually wanted something like this for both my rc stuff and some of my plastic model stuff and so i was lucky to find one the other the other week. I was like, all right, for five bucks, how can I pass that up? So I've now I've got two things to I think they're from the same company, as a matter of fact. Uh yeah, it looks like it's, it's the same font. So I've got a sanding meter thing. So you place a piece of wood stick or something, and you, you rub this little this is a sandpaper on here. You rub it back and forth, you got a nice supposedly uh, even uh, and, and squared up sanding. And of course it's got graduations too. Keep that usually at 90. And so now I have the companion meter cut. It's not a saw, it's just a straight knife. So I don't know how it works. I've never tried it before. So it may work great, it may work terribly. I do not know, but hey, I figured I might be able to use it on this particular uh, kit here. And if, in fact, I put that over here. And that doesn't work. I still have my old trusty uh, 
motorized uh, cutoff saw thing. And this is a great Harbor Freight special, wonderful little device. Uh, although I may need to change the angle on it. All right, so uh, before I start, uh, I went to the grocery store because I, I think I ran out last time, some parchment paper. I used to use wax paper, but now from a recommendation from an old buddy, he says, no, you gotta use parchment paper. It's a little better than wax paper. It's a little less sticky, believe it or not. And he's right, it's actually pretty good. Not quite as clear as wax paper, but clear enough. So you can get it at your grocery store. So I'm gonna pull it out here real quick. So it's a good thing that to know that I've been using it because I ran out of ran out of it or couldn't find another roll, but I knew I didn't have much left. So decided to get some anyways. And so that's amazing. I've used enough to run out. I've built enough stuff. That's pretty good. So I'm gonna grab some paper. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Let me guys know if you have problems seeing anything. So all I do is just lay out a sheet. Where's the cutter? Right there. Come on, cut. There we go. Good enough. Okay, so this is great. So you can probably see there, you can still see the plans very well enough over the parchment paper, although it's got some printing on it. I wish I didn't want print stuff on it, but anyway, good enough. So, all right. What do we have here? Anybody say anything? Huh, a little bit of spam there. All right, so uh, the instructions say to start with the wing. What's nice about the instructions is they're very well laid out, step by step by step by step. The supplementary photos with a QRC code here. Uh, it gives you an idea about, you know, moving parts. But there's little check boxes. Oh, it reminds me. I need a pen. Give me a second to find my way. Since this is a review, I need to make notes occasionally. And I forgot to grab a pen. Here it is. All right. We've got a cool pen from Legend Hobby. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, I uh, probably can't zoom in, but it's got graduation marks on it. So I got can metric and imperial. So that's pretty cool. Oh, there's a level bubble. Never noticed that. This is a really neat pen. Uh, it's just a pen. It's got a, a little thing for um, touch, touch phones or touch screens, rubber thing. Anyways, so now if, I think I am ready to get started on this thing. So. Hopefully the video is, is stream is good, and we will. Oh, I gotta pin this down. All right, and I'm gonna zoom out a little more. All right. There. And, I don't know, there. Just have to be perfect. Okay. So, uh, interesting enough, the first thing it says is we need to build alignment triangles. So, the kit apparently has these little triangle things to uh make that you to help align stuff together so let's so i can find it in the box in the box of goodies there's a lot of stuff in here uh, is it uh, balsa or ply pb3 pb2 so in the back, there is actually a diagram, here we go, of all the wood pieces. So you know, PB, PB, PB. There, I found it, PB3 and PB1, PB2. 
two short pieces and the ribs. That's not it. I pulled a lot of the wood out earlier, so who the hell knows where I did it. Oh, here's one. All right, so here it is. Laser cutting is pretty nice on it. Clear through. Two spots for a little bit of scorching, but you know, you got various wood densities, so that'll happen. But uh, there's one. Actually, does that XPB2 right on the sheet. So, in fact, some pieces are falling out. And there's the other one. All right. No, oh, there's the two I need. Pieces pre cut people on your triangles, a bunch of 290 degree triangles. So you can use vertically to align any of the parts. All right, so don't know if I'll use these or not, but let's pull them out. Get a little bit of it. There we go. Just being careful, it's coming out. There we go. Pop those two out. So somehow it, I guess it kind of connects together like that. Oh, there we go, okay. All right, so you can't see it. I got a piece of glass here I can use to Level things out. And I'll drop. Oh, I forgot my. Yeah, uh... eh, it's all right. All right. And I'll throw a little bit of glue on it. There we go. Done. I think there's another one. There's another one. So I'll pop that out. Oops. It wasn't quite cut all the way through, damaged it slightly. Touch it up a little bit. Ah, dang it. I'm gonna glue to my hand. Yeah, this was my fault. I didn't. Uh... There we go. Ah, I was sticking to my fingers. All right. Pieces are a little bit delicate on the small thing here. It's actually not quite a 45 degree triangle. It's slightly more of a 60 degree, depending on the orientation. Uh, so it doesn't say vertically aligned. So I guess I get the tall piece. Stand that up. A little bit of glue. All right, so we got the little triangle pieces. That's one thing to check off. Prepare your work area. Yeah, I did that. Wax paper, blah, blah, blah. Lower wing spar. All right, so we'll just over. There, there. Yeah, my workbench is going to get real busy. All right, so we got to find the wood spar. Spar wood. There we go. Subject. Object verb. All right, let's see. So we got a bunch of wood here. I normally have my, uh, I had a, some plastic calipers. They walked away on me. So I will use, uh, I got a little scale here I'll use. Oh, so we're for one length of 3 16 by 3 eighths. 
Basswood. All right, well, it eliminates all this balsa. Basswood being quite a bit harder than balsa wood. It looks a little different. This kind of looks like it right here. Let's see what it says here. Yeah, three. How many sixteenths? Three sixteenths by three eighths. One, two, three eighths. One, two, three sixteenths. All right, so. We will do that. Maybe we'll zoom in just a touch. Oh, that is zoomed in, huh? All right, that's zoomed in as far as it'll go. All right, so looks like this is just one to start with. All right, uh, so I'll put these aside. And I knew I was going to forget something. I'll just use a chop saw. Yep, that works. I'm going to reset this to 90 degrees. And sit this over here. All right. So, uh, measure to cut it in length, make sure it extends beyond R1 and R9. So these are ribs, R1 is R9. Reading the manual here. But eighth inch is 316. Using screws of medium CA. Medium CA is right here. Get that ready. And I got some kicker. All right, so we got Kicker, we've got the glues, and I got the thingamajiggies. I'll stick it over here. Got this. Um, I need to get some more weights. Give me one second. Is this long enough? I'm all mic'd up. And it's all it's under stuff. Ah. Ah. Yeah, it's long enough. So I don't trip over anything. All right, so over on the uh, RC Roundtable page, we were talking about these uh, one, two, three blocks. And I have a bunch of them. I have the perforated one, uh, and I have a heavier duty, pretty much solid one. These way, in fact, I marked one of them. This weighs uh, 26 ounces. So a uh, uh, pound and a half. I've used them as nose weights, but they're great for building because I can now lay them down over the spar to hold it down like that. Yeah, all right. Now it says I need to, uh, where's the pen? Mark them and cut them. So I am going to actually take these off for a second. Did I leave anything in the chat here? There'll be videos, hey, Ward. Greg, hey, Greg. Greg, good to see you on. So, my old buddy Greg is on. That's good to see you popped in. I will see you in a couple of weeks, as a matter of fact. Yeah, Joseph, nice. I'm building one of the 56 kits. Coop build off. Yes. Oh, hold on. I got a friend here. Hold on a second.
Well, uh, sorry about that. Um, so there was a wasp that was in the workshop. In my rush to get uh, the spray, I tripped over the microphone cord and severed the mic. So my lapel mic is, is no longer usable. <laughs> uh, let me know how well you can hear me. I am so sorry. Uh, bugger. So, I normally wear a, wear a lapel mic. I just hooked up a uh, shotgun mic for a second. It's probably going to sound terrible. Uh, let me know in the chat. Yeah, there's every once in a while, a wasp kind of comes in. I don't know where they come in. I got some spray, and I just wanted to eradicate it. And I broke. I stepped on the cable, and it's broken. No more lapel mic. It was a good mic. It served me well. I don't think it's easily fixable. Uh, I don't know if I have another mic. This one was great because I have a really long cable. Uh, what do you know? Well, how well can you hear me? How well can you hear me now that I'm turning away from the uh, microphone? Can you hear me at all? Yeah. All right. It's generally a pretty good mic. Oh, let me take off the dead cat. That might sound a little better. Ah, I'm so sorry. Well, off the Amazon to go order another one. Ah, I can't believe I did that. Well, this one had been, it's been through a lot. The clip was broken. That's probably why I broke it. I stripped on it because of the normal clip. How far away? Yeah, fucker. I don't know if I can fix that. Give me a second to think. Um, I was that. I had a um, extension. Hold on one second. Let me try. Uh, I have a solution. Hold on. Let me try one thing before I give up. Let's see. Uh, what's like this? This. All right. 
Oh, and I plug something in and let me know how it sounds. Test, 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 test. Can you hear me? Let me know in the chat how this sounds. Testing one, two, three. What is your thing in front of you? Is that good? Oh, crap. All right. It seems got a better clip. All right. I'm surprised that worked. Oh, I'm going to put the muffler on. <laughs> it's bypassed like a Christmas tree, as Daddy would say, but hey, as long as it works. All right, next time I see the wasp, I'm just going to ignore it. All right, thanks, guys. Better? All right. It'll have to do. I'll have to, my poor, I'll have to give my other microphone a going away ceremony. Good funeral. Better? Okay. We will go with that then. Let me turn this off. Awesome. Hold on one second. Put my light back up. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah, Greg, I saw your message about um, tracing out the template. Don't really need to do that per se because it's already pre-traced out. <laughs> it's all laser cut, so I trace the negative, I guess you could say, if I wanted to make another one. But it's a good idea. I like that idea. What I'll do is I will keep the uh, other pieces of the, uh, the, the pieces that the wood was cut out of in case I do need to make replace, repair pieces or something. All right, so where was I? I was going to, before I got interrupted by flying stingy things. Uh, and then of course I've lost my pen. Here it is. All right, let's see. So we need to, this needs to back over an eighth of an inch. I think this is it. Okay, basswood spar. It said R1 and R9. R1, R9. Uh, I should have changed my glasses. So I'm going to mark. Uh, mark a spot here. All right. So since this is basswood, I'm going to use my Uber power thing here. Huge up CA to stack to tack the Spartan place to show. No, I don't need to do that. We short straight along the entire length. And another. I've got more lead weights if I need them, but I'll just try this for now. Uh, oh, Robert, one thing no R. It just fits, as is if the shoe does. Uh, let's see. All right, so now we need the wing ribs. I gotta find those, and that is on sheet five. Give me a second. You know, if I was smart, I would have poked, picked out the sheets before I started. Here's five. All right, so on number five, there's a little teeny tiny little tip rib here, R9. So we want you to make sure R9 is perfectly aligned when gluing it. So we're going to, Pat, before I do that, I'm going to actually take the knife 
and cut out a few sections here. There's little spots where they didn't cut so the pieces don't fall off, but I want to slice those a little bit so this should come right out. And yes, it does. Look at that. There's also a little square rectangles here. <laughs> no problem, Robert. I've been called worse. All right, so we've got a nice little rib here. I'm not sure where the, the best angle. Three. Oh, I keep so I can have it here, here, we got here, to there. To, I'm just testing my field of view here. All right, so this goes on the end here. Ah, nice. Laser cutting is fits really good. Yeah, nice press fit on there. I don't know well you can see that. And so what I can also do is place this block to get it a nice. Oops, I can't place a block like that. Place a block. <laughs> you get a nice ninety degree. Probably from the inside would be better. There we go. So using this block, I can get it 90 degrees with the spar and vertical. And then I can drop some glue on there. Uh, yeah, medium CA. Since normally I would use thin, but because it's basswood, basswood will soak up the thin. So I'm going to add medium CA in there. Get that dry. He said, make sure good triangles you give a hand. Yeah. Yeah. You can use the little triangles I just made as well if you wanted to. Um, there, there. But I got the blocks. I like the blocks. But it's an option. A uh, little spar. Okay, he just reading instructions are just telling me to make sure it's straight and you can use triangles and that kind of stuff. Uh, and there's a bunch of ribs, so I got to put in R3, which starts here, through R8, which goes to here, and that should be that's copy paste pretty much. So I just got to find them, and they are on BP4, 5, and 6. So here's five. Again, I'm going to just slice the holding tabs here. I like to do that just to make sure you don't split the wood or anything. Look at that, just popped right out. I got a nice sharp X-Acto knife. So, oh, that's two. I don't need two. Pay attention. Well, I cut out two. Don't need it yet. I need five. Oh, I need my trash can. I'll stick it down there. All right, do that again. Let me know if you guys have any trouble seeing anything. So, right now I'm just going to cut out rib five. I should more or less pop out. Come on. There we go. Laser cutting is nice, but uh, the laser doesn't know the density of the wood. Come on, get out of there. I don't care what you smell. So I can see the wood is a little thicker. There we go. A little denser, not thicker. Right there. How about the little triangles? It's nice that these, they paid enough attention to detail to actually cut out the center of the ribs like that for lightning holes. So what else we have? There's R7 and R3. Uh, looks like I just need R4 somewhere. I'll find that in a second. And R8. 
So we'll grab our seven. So three. All right, and poke these out. I can just poke these out. There we go. They come right out. A little trash can there. Look at that. These things don't weigh anything, which is good because the whole thing's going to be sheeted at some point. Now, uh, there's our four. And our six, and our eight. It looks like it's that's it. <whistles> we had a. I went to a fly-in today for at our, one of my clubs I belong to. And it was windy, windy as heck. Nice day, though. Otherwise, a very nice day. And it was also a swap meet, of course. And, man, there was a couple things I really had to sit on my wallet. That was really juicy, really, really nice. I wouldn't have mind having in my hanger. But uh, I've, I've got to cut back on my purchases. Uh, so no new kits. All those couple were really, really tempting. Uh, but I did get some some small goodies. I've got a uh, ended up getting a couple of little motors for a couple of kits I had on the shelf, and a couple of really tiny receivers, and um, what else? Not much else. Uh, oh, I got a little FPV camera for my T28. Some guy had custom made. A, he had purchased a separate canopy. And put a, a camera and, and a transmitter and some other goodies. It was really neat. Uh, and it just just dropped plug and play on an E Flight T28. And I said, well, that's neat. I, you know, I played around with FPV a little bit. It wasn't really my big thing, but this was really cool what he did. And so I was going to get it and try it out. All right. So it looks like I've got all the ribs. See, so I needed three, four, if you can see that, sorry, five. Six, seven, eight, and nine is already there. All right. We are ready to go. Okay, locate ribs using the same techniques. Glue each of these ribs in place. Make sure each one is in a proper place and perfectly aligned at 90 degrees to the building surface. If you notice, these have actually have little tabs. I don't know how you can see it. Since this wing is not flat bottomed, they've put a little tab thing on them which is nice to even it out so it's straight and level. All right, so I am going to start putting ribs. R3, R3, so I double check. This one fits, it's a little, not quite as tight as the other one. We've got our four and our five. All right, and our six, our seven, our eight, Romeo eight. All right, we'll grab some glue. Make sure I'm not missing anything. Glue each of his ribs. Okay, it does say to glue them. So, using the same block, I'm going to align everything. These blocks are neat because I can align them with the spar and vertically like that. I don't know if you can see that. And make sure to detail on a thing and then just throw some glue in there. Another there. A little kicker. Same thing here. Take this off for a second. It's 
So just making sure everything is aligned with the plans. The, the trailing edge is flat. Glue, kicker. Repeat ad nauseum. Phone's going off. So far. Mm -hmm. All right, things looking good so far. All right, sorry for my big fat heads in the way. off a little bit all right oh all right so I'm gonna go some glue on the other side. There we go. There we go. All right, so got a bunch of ribs in there, and we're pretty much done with the first page. It's only started with half of it. Two SW3s from LP4. All right, so I need some other pieces. What the heck is LP4? All right. So, I'm going to go back to a trusty diagram in the back here. Oh, what the heck is that? Spar webbing? Oh, okay. All right. All right. Well. <laughs> Gotta find it. Oh, duh. It's a, it's a small sheet, not the large one. Pay attention. All right, let's see. All right, I one of these. Hey, I'm not seeing it. FS, BN, BP. You think it wouldn't be that hard to find one of these? I move it somewhere. Nope. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, they're plywood. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. LP. So I guess P means plywood. All right. So everything's labeled quite nicely, but I wasn't paying attention. Okay. So LB. So B for balsa, P for plywood. I shall remember that. So, no locate the two. 
Oh, really? They glued in? I would have, should have known that. So, two SW3. So, we've got one, two. Uh, it's plywood. I want to grab a sanding block. There it is. Sand these down a little bit. All right, and so these go somewhere. Got a little hole. Go to the next page. Oh, okay. So, glued between R3 and R2, not yet installed. Oh, okay. Small circle etched on SW3, which designate the top edges. Oh, yeah, there's a little circle right there. Glued in place as shown. That's nice. They, 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 he marked it. It says, hey, this side goes up. Because uh, they're tapered. Very, very slightly tapered. When I look at it. Okay. So he's saying glue between R3 and R2. So they go here. Probably tapered like that. And uh, there's a small edge circle, top edges. These are glued as shown. Put it up against R3. Make sure the tabs point towards R2. R3 does be glued to the lower spars shown here. Okay, so there's a bunch of gluing going on. Before we do that, I want to step off for a second and grab a drink. I forgot to get one. I think I can just disconnect it here. Ha, I'm back. <clears throat> All right, so if you're just joining us, I am working on an old school model works 109. And this is it. This will be a review in the upcoming issue of Model Evasion Magazine. And it is an all balsa wood kit, semi profile, hand launch, electric or glow. And I figured. You guys want to see me put this together. I've already got the wing. Some work done on it. I found the plywood pieces for the uh, ribs here. So I'm just going to double check that they are, this is the way they go. It looks like it. So I'm saying to put these in, to glue them in, and then I probably, here's our two as a matter of fact. And then I'll probably, yeah, there's a little squares. Cut these out for a second. Yeah. All right, so looks like at some point this will go like this and then key in. Yeah. Key in like that. Look at that. All right. That'll work. My spar is moving a little bit. I'm going to do something to keep it from moving around on me. All right, kind of sort of keep it from moving. Do the same thing to the other end. I don't think I can stick through the bass. Can I? Oh, yeah, I can. Ah, barely. <sighs> keep it. All right. So I just pinned on the, the spar a little bit so it doesn't move around on me. Oh, keep the weights on it. All right, so I'm going to take this off and glue these on. Looks like there is a little bit of a 
So we've got the dot facing up, dot facing up. And I'm going to give a bit of glue on the bottom here. Again, with the medium CA. Some glue there. Just let that sit. Right here, I got this block here. Looks like that worked really well. We've got the spar is going to go on the top. Make sure that fits well. Yep. Perfect. In fact, I could put another piece. It doesn't say to do that, but I think you could probably stick a piece here. To really make sure everything is lined up. Where's the other piece? There it is. Dot up. So again, I'm just going to put a bead, glue on the bottom, a spar, a little bit up on the edge. Slide that in there like that. Within a couple seconds, it's glued pretty good. Oh, I love CA. All right. Uh oh, this is the same one. I didn't make a mistake. Two threes. Okay, good. Because <laughs> the next step, they're not the same. So glue to the lower spar, glue to the rib, and look at the R2 from the BP. There's R2. Glue in place, making sure the tabs are fully inserted. Make sure R2 is perfectly aligned 90 degrees to the building surface. So I guess, they're like everything else, everything's gotta be 90, 90, 90. Uh, so there's nice little tabs here. Uh, squeeze everything in there. Get in there. There we go. Now you probably can't see it all that well. Let me get my head out of the way. So it basically keys in. There's not really any much you can mess up at this point. Just make sure the trailing edge is down. Make sure that is there. And then I will, um, in fact, let me pull it back a little bit. Throw some glue in there. In there, there we go. There we go. Just kind of push it in there, push it down, push it in, push it there. Put a little more glue down there, some glue down there. There we go. That's pretty neat. So it looks like they're making some sort of uh, uh, wing rib, not wing rib, webbing, spar webbing here. Make it real strong near the root. Beef that up. So I gotta find, oh no, wait a minute. R2, right? Make sure it's 90 degrees, 90 degrees. And trailing edge, that's interesting. <laughs> it's funny. Big bold letters. Be careful and take your time when installing this piece. All right. Locate the trailing edge from BP8. So it's a laser cut trailing edge. It's nice. And it's balsa. It has angles. Slots will line up. Reading the instructions helps. So BP8. Excuse me. Is this BP-8? <clears throat> nope, it is not. Funny thing I always want with a new kit is you have a lot of pieces. There we go, throwing edge. <clears throat> As you build, you get less and less pieces, easier to find things. 
So we have BP-8. The instruction says the trailing edge. even says TE for trailing edge. Nice laser cut trailing edge. I'm going to put this out of here. Again, I'm going to cut the uh, demarcation lines here. Ha-ha! Look at that. <clears throat> All right, looking in the chat here. Anything going on? Oh, Greg. What? Oh, Gre Greg's going to be trolling me in the chat. Thank you. Super Ango, hello. All right, so we've got the trailing edge. just a balsa piece with some slots cut in, cut in it. It's pretty neat. Should make it easier to sand. So it's at an angle. So looks like I'll have to. Ah! <laughs> you didn't hear that. <laughs> I just broke a rib accidentally. Don't. Oh. I can glue it back. Don't. Oh. My fault. I literally dumb thumbed it. <laughs> all right anyways it's fixed a little thin ca we're done all right so i'm going to place this trailing edge i think the slots will line up with the ribs okay as it says take your time piece as well the backs of the ribs are delicate a little at a time work the trailing edge into the back of each rib once it's all properly the trailing edge will be flush with the back of each rib in place all right so i'm gonna start here with the root work my way down slowly they said take your time so i will take my time i am not in any rush nice saturday night at least here if you're watching in some other country or something it's probably a set sunday morning all right so i'm working the pieces they are going in The laser cut is good. I repeat, the laser cut is good. Oh well, yeah, there you go. So as I work my way back and forth, it's sliding right in there. It's, the nice thing is it's basically self-aligning once you start getting everything in. Yeah, there it is. It's in there. So it says, uh, once it's start properly, the trailing edge will be flush with the back of the ribs. So to make sure they are flush, I'm going to use my blocks here. So I can push it in, and when it hits the thing, it's flush. Kind of sort of flush enough. All right. So I think that's right. That looks right. That looks right. All right, so we are gluing the trailing edge at this point, I think. Does it say to glue? Glue in place. All right. Always double check it. Sometimes I'll say, do this, but don't glue. Kind of like that game you play as a kid where you, you got a Simon Says or something and Simon didn't say. All right, so I'm just double checking. Trailing edge is in place. The spar has not moved. It is down. Get the trailing edge. The trailing edge kind of came down a little bit. All right. All right. In that point, I am going to start gluing. I'm going to use thin CA this time because it's all balsa to balsa. And it's a pretty, pretty tight fit. Being anal retentive, making sure the trailing edge is probably really not terribly important that it's super aligned as far as the trailing edge. But I'll just make sure it is. All right, get some glue in there. All right. 
and the glute is already set. Let's think about C thin Z A. Make sure you got it right first time. All right, so trailing edge is glued. Now we're gonna go some more ply parts. SW one and two from BP two. BP British Petroleum. It is supposed to be plywood, right? There's not that many bees is. <laughs> check twice, glue once. In my case, it's usually check four times, glue once, and I probably still messed it up. All right, so I'm going to find the mysterious pieces that I'm missing. Oh, oh. B, balsa. Are they balsa? The P was ply, right? Oh, no, B, B is balsa. Oh. Arr, arr. Okay. One of these days I get the logistics of it. So they are not. That's interesting. So I'm looking for. Sorry, I'm looking for the right sheet. Uh, okay, that's the one. BP two, BP. Oh wait, I already had BP three, didn't I? I do look at, look at the cheat sheet. Uh, balsa. SW1 from BP2, SW1 from BP3. SW1 from Wait, what? I think he's got a typo. LP. Yeah, he's got a typo in instructions. That's why I was giving so much a problem. Uh, all right, so gotta make a note. Typo. This is step eight. And it looks like it should be. LP2, LP3. find those it happens that kind of thing happens so I'll make a note of it yeah mr. Lanterman and he'll fix it so now I got to find that sheet uh, let's see no it's not here yeah here it is haha there we go all right so that's what I was wondering why it would be balsa. It didn't make any sense. All right. So, oh, SW2. And I need SW1. Software 1, Software 2. Got my sanding. Oh, look at that. <laughs> sanding stick. Sand off the little tabs since they're plywood. A little... 
All right. So, and I got the little dots that, that go up. Uh, looks like it goes this way. Yep. Eh? Yeah. A little dot that goes. Yeah. Okay, so this is neat. They've got a, uh, if you look at it, I don't know if you can see, it is slanted for a dihedral. So it automatically will set your dihedral. It just fits in there. Though I do see a little boo-boo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta make another tab. Now, in all fairness, uh, I understand I got actually an early kit. So there was, I was warned that there might be some minor, minor nitpicks, niggles. And I see one here. The tab on the right side here is too long. So when I place it in the slot, I got about a sixteenth or so of an inch of a gap between the rib and the side. So I'm just gonna make a note that um, SW1 and two, uh, inner tab, I guess. All right. So that's not quite right. <laughs> I was just thinking normally I'd probably take a picture of it, <laughs> but I can't because <laughs> the camera I'm using to uh, do the live stream is also the same camera I use to do still pictures. Uh, but I got the other wing, so when I get to the other wing, I'll take a picture of that. So what I'm going to have to do is cut it down, I think. But let me double check to see if that actually is a problem. Yeah, it looks like the picture it's flush, so this is not sitting flush. So I am going to trim it down. So what's your destruction say? So SW1 goes in, oh, I had them backwards too. SW1 goes in the front, SW2 goes in the back. So they must be slightly different. So good to double check. Their circles etched, their circles are up. So that's kind of foolproof. So the nice thing about these kits is I think that even if you have very little time building a balsa kits, you should actually really have an easy time putting this together. Each step has its own picture. And pictures are, even though they're black and white, they're actually quite clear. There's even some drawings. Um, it's very verbose. Uh, we're really gonna give them kudos to their instructions, I think at this point so far. Things are logical, straightforward, clear. Other than my typo, but that happens. Uh, let's see, drive fit the next step so you understand where I'm going here. <laughs> A little editorial he's written here. Slide the single tab FW1 into the hole on R2. All right. And now get both an upper height. Now to get both to the proper height, use R1 as a guide. Oh, I don't have R1. By pushing into place with the twin tabs, um, sliding at the holes in R1. Okay, you'll see the R1 will hold the S upper. Oh, okay, so that's interesting. Now remove the SWs, apply glue, and attach them in place. Make sure you glue to the lower spar, but do not glue R1 in place at this time. All right, so I gotta find R1. It's gotta be in here somewhere. R3, R2, oh, R1's ply, looks like. Here's R1. I mean, look at this. This is eighth inch ply, it looks like. Really, so this is amazing what laser cutting can do. This is pretty cool. So there's two R1s on here. I'm going to take R1 off of here. It's interesting, R1 is plywood and not balsa like all the other ones, which makes sense being the uh, uh, the root rib. All right, all right. Just do some a little bit of sanding of the little nubs. 
don't really need to sand the laser cutting part. I'm just sanding off little nubs from the laser cutting discontinu discontinuous lines. All right, so what he's saying is he wants us to do, uh, I got this pin in the way, sort of a test fit. Ah. So I'm going to grab this and stick it there. There we go. So apparently these are not flush with the bottom, so we need to put this rib. I want to take it off and see if it fits. Okay, it does. Take this off, fit that in there. W1's in the front. Oh man, how did it go? <laughs> I just broke that a little bit. Oh, I see. It's not quite. Oh, that's interesting. Is there too many lines? I broke a rib, and it seems odd that I would break it. Oh, yeah. I do believe I found an error in the laser cutting. It looks like the lines pass through here, causing a, a stress point. Like the laser, when you cut out the two squares, or something, or cutting out the slots, the laser took a pass and cut out about a third of the bolt of the plywood, making it easy to break. I don't know if you can see that. See, I just broke it. Probably an artifact of the drawing when he drew it, and uh, it's 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 something easy easy mistake to make. Uh, I'm gonna make a note. Uh, it may have already been fixed. I don't know. Like I said, this is an early version, so and I was warned it. You might have some minor issues, not, not big issues, but, you know, when you come up with a new kit, you know, to, to air is human. So, I'll make a note here. Or one. Not something I really knocked the kit per se for, but it's something I will provide feedback to the designer. Say, hey, in case you didn't notice, there's a slight error. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a little bit of glue on it, see if I can give it a minor repair. Just a touch. All right, should be enough. So anyways, where was I? Unless this is supposed to be broken, I don't know. No, according to the pictures, it doesn't look like it. I'll ask him and say, hey, is that those extra lines supposed to be there or is that an error? So anyways, I had SW1, that side up. I'll be more careful this time. SW2, dot side up. Ah! Stay there. Uh, and slide that in there somehow. Da, da. More pieces are coming off. And then slide that in there. Okay. So, all right. So I'm just test fitting it right now. Nothing's glued. I'm just seeing how everything fits together. Instructions were adamant that I test fit, not glue, check angles, turn around a couple times, pray to the balsa gods before gluing anything in. So I am double checking. Now, remember I talked about the tab issue being too long. It looks like that's still an issue. So I am going to rectify that now. So what I want to do is... I need to cut these. I don't know if I can cut them with uh exacto knife. Can I? So I'm just going to trim this piece. Oh, yeah, I can do it with the exacto knife. It's ply, so I didn't know how well exacto would cut. 
So to give you an idea, I don't know if you can see that. It's probably too far away. You know, come a little closer. So, I don't know if you can see that. This tab is a long tab, and I trimmed it down a little bit. and get it. Uh, there you go. You can probably see it there. So, I'm just going to trim the other one, too, and that should be good. So, yeah, that's much better. So, I just trimmed about half of it to two-thirds of it. It doesn't need to stick in very much. All right, I'll test fit this one. Yep, that's good. All right, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. So it talks about being the right height, but to be honest with you, just flat with the bottom is the right height. It looks good. So I could probably glue it. Okay, just thinking. This is the important part, actually. Pretty sure the spar is gonna to have to go all the way through. So what I'm going to do is test fit this top spar here. And then two. So I'm not going to glue the top, it's just a scrap piece of spar for the top. Yeah, so everything will, will be nice and tight and even. I think that'll work. screw it up so I think that'll work just fine all right so medium CA SW1 for the B to glue on the bottom edge and not quite all the way here there oops yeah, mood. Oops. There and this W up. Be the glue on this side. If I can, I like to put the glue on the wood first and then attach it. If I can, I can't always do that, but it really generally gives you a really good bond when you do that as opposed to trying to glue over something that's already attached. There we go. And I'm gonna slide this in there, this ring rib, make sure everything's lined up. Should be lined up. There we go. All right, so the edge rib is looks good. It's lined up. That's glued in. <laughs> Don't mix the C activator with the wasp. <laughs> no, drastically different bottles. Uh, let's see. You cut it out after the wing joiner to slide in. Oh, okay. All right, so that wasn't an error. That's why I wanted. I was wondering about that. Probably didn't look ahead enough. 
Yep, there it is. Okay, that makes sense. So, thanks, chat. All right, that makes sense. So, that was not an error when I said the, the laser were cut. It's something that gets poked out later. You need the rib in one piece. And then I see on step 34, there's a hole there that you'll need to for the spar, the wing joiner, which is here that sets the dihedral. Thank you. Oh, that, that makes perfect sense now. Okay. I feel better. Again, as like I said, it's, um, I didn't quite see that in the picture, so maybe that's why. Maybe the pictures are wrong and the laser has been updated. So I will make a note on that. That is good. I had a question mark. That is good. Making a note here. Ah, see? Always miss the trees for the forest. All right. Think of for that, just fly. Good observation. All right, going back a couple of spots. Okay, so it says, do not glue R1 in at this time. So I'm going to let R1 sit here, but it's not glued in. It's going to sit there. Locate SW1B from LP3. So I got another ply piece I got to find. Somewhere. They're saying SW1B from LP3. SW1B, here it is. Uh, all right. Yeah, SW1 beta. That's got a little hole. Hey. Yeah. All right, so this apparently goes here. Note the circle, which is what? That's right. <laughs> it's got a little humor here in the instructions. Including place is shown, making sure tabs are fully seated in R1, R2 tabs. All right, it's time to glue R1 in place. Ah, okay. Okay, that's why I didn't want you to glue R1. Because I'm going to pull this out. Uh, because you need to pull R1 out to fit this in. Otherwise, it'll never make it. So let me get this back in here. So I need to pull this out a little bit. Pull R1 out. Slide this in. All right, and then slide it all back together again. So it's a nice little box. I'm not quite sure what it's setting up at the moment, but it's pretty neat. So, R1 is attached to the trailing edge, attached to the center box. And to the front. Make sure everything looks good. Make sure it's right. And some glue. All right, put it all together. More glue. Glue this there. All right, look at that. Sort of look like a wing. I think we're supposed to glue it properly installed, five degree. Glue R1 in place. That's what it said. Cut the L oh, <laughs> I 
I'm actually supposed to check something before I glue it. It says now's the time to glue, but actually there was a couple more steps. Cut into, there's a, okay, here's a section we cut into. Cut into LP4s, the hydro gauge is shown. Pop it out and help her. So we're gonna get the test to see how well he set up his line because I've already glued that in, but I was supposed to do another step first. Not paying attention to instructions. So I need to find the dihedral gauge. You see it here live, I made a mistake. Well, it's probably okay, but I did not read ahead far enough. So I gotta find a dihedral gauge somewhere. Oh, there it is. Apply four. There it is. Dihedral gauge. I can pop it out. That's pretty neat. So he's got a little thing. What's this little slot for? My chat die? Yeah. You guys have been quiet in the chat. That's interesting. All right, so I'm going to have the hydro gauge. I'll pop this out. Nice slice. It's nice that it gives you this neat little device. So it's even labeled up R1 board. Uh, I'm not sure what. Oh, maybe this goes in here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. All right. So I'm going to add a little bit of glue to this. Yeah. Good. Straight. A little kicker. Hydra. Hydra died. What does that mean, Andrew? Hydra. All right, so here's a dihedral brace, and it wants you to press it up, I, I presume. Perfectly flat and wrong, the same five angle along its entire length. Guess what? It matches. No problem. Figures much. That's pretty neat, because it's set by the ply leading edge in the spar section, so I don't see why it would be off. The only part that could possibly be off would be the trailing edge, but that's okay. All right, we're good. That's good, because I don't want to have to tear it off. That's pretty cool. Ah, here. All right, so what else it says? All right, there's some other pieces. Locate the one WH. All right, include one WH from LP three, WH two. So we need a White House two. All right. Okay, so WH, WH2. Look at the instructions. Okay, one WH2 from W3. This is a glued in place between R1 and R2 on the back edge. The notches in each rib, a lot of tabs, and each WH2 to fit in place. Oh, okay. Well, it's got to work like this. Huh. Well, that's pretty snazzy. Just kind of go there. It will sit proud of the rib surface. Proud. 
<laughs> it's an odd, odd terminology. All right, so. Glue piece in place. We got a little piece up here we got to glue in. Interesting. Uh, what am I going to glue with? So we want some glue to the edges. Again, plywood to plywood. Oops. So we're up there. All right. Proud. I guess it means it sticks up a little bit. Okay. Interesting. Just a little bit of. There it is. That was WH2. All right, that was that step. <laughs> okay. Locate three HSs from Balsa P8. I don't know what Balsa P8 is. Uh, all right, let's see. Oh, I see some more chat. Intended to be a dihedral joke. Yeah, I don't get it. <laughs> Sorry, Andrew. Went over my head. Oh, Anthony, bonjour from France. Bonjour, Mizu. Uh, dog man, I have a CA glue allergy. What would you? Uh oh. Hopefully. Stream's still alive, I thought. I saw the stream. You said, okay, it's still good. All right, uh, as far as allergies, uh, you probably would need an alphatic glue then, um, something akin to Gorilla Glue or Elmer's Glue. Um, look it up. There's a lot of people who do have CA allergies, so there's other options. Uh, not quite as fast a building, but it's still, it's still very much doable. Uh, there's something else. I can't remember what it's called. I'm sure you can find some really good threads that pop up on RC groups and look, do a search for allergic to CA and do, do get all kinds of uh, suggestions. I'm not, so I only loosely paid attention to those, but uh, um, there, are, there are options. All right, so there's another section. Where am I? Look, it, it's just BP-8. So I wanted to find out what BP-8 looks like. It's really nice to put these cheat sheets in here. Okay, it's balsa. Oh, same with the trailing edge. And where did I put that? Yeah, right here. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of, I don't know what HS means, but there's a whole bunch of little angled things here, angled pieces. I'm going to cut one out. All right, uh, let's see, and it says to, well, I keep putting the wrong page. So it's angled, so I can go this way. And I'll go this way, looks like. So it looks like a reinforced balsa trailing edge piece. Let's see what it says. Three, so it needs three of them. I'm guessing it goes there, we'll find out. One, two, three. <laughs> I'd almost want to put some music on, but I'd probably get a copyright strike. All right, so, okay, three. These are in glue and spots between R2 and R3, just like I suspected. And R4 and R5. Oh, they skip one. And R7 and R8. Oh, the plot thickens. Oh, I think I know what they're for. I bet they're for the hinges. 
Yes, yes, they are. I think I see the hinge lines in the plans. So what we're doing is we're thickening up the trailing edge for when we slot it for the hinges. Ah, very clever, Mr. Bond. All right. Once we go in place, you'll need to carefully sand them so their profiles match the profile. I'll do sanding later. So you need, you'll need to do this with each. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do it later. Okay, simple enough. Use a block to make sure they're flush. So R2 and R3, R4 and R5. I'm using medium CA since I'm applying it after an R7 and R8. R7 and R8, yeah. There we go. That feels good. All right. Ah, okay. Wait, what? Stand by. Kept reading the instructions here. So carefully sand away. Let's get sand away. Carefully cut. That's the end. Away the center of the R2 rib, leaving a box as shown in the photo. Carefully sand the inside of the box so the edges are smooth and flush. This forms three sides of the dihedral box, as somebody mentioned earlier. Um, needs to be smooth and free from edges so the red dihedral braces slide in smoothly when joining we have together. All right, so interesting. So I got to cut this one. I didn't notice that. Leaving the box, but I don't cut the outer one yet. Interesting. All right, so I gotta find a way to cut this this guy. I have a razor saw. <laughs> so I'm gonna use my razor saw. And uh, hold on a second. This way keeps coming off. Try cutting it here. Actually, wrong razor saw. This one is too, it's not, uh, what do you call it, deep enough. Uh oh. I got a, out of focus. There you go. This one is not quite deep enough. So I have a deeper one. I got to go run over and get it. I'll be right back. It's on the other uh, table. Okay, all right, so much deeper. Look at the uh, the difference. It can really deep down. This one is a little coarser in the teeth and I think slightly thicker. Yeah, so that's why I was favoring this one, but I need to do what I need to do. So I'm gonna get in there and just, you can't really see there's a, In there, get in there. Yeah. So there's a joiner from the rib was one piece. So now the rib is kind of two pieces. So 
soon. Cut out the loose in the center. Nice overhead camera. That would look cool. So I just need to pull the pieces out. Use the exacto knife to sort of kind of hard to get in there. And I kind of glued part of it. <laughs> so now I know what not to do on the next on the other wing half. Yeah, hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm gonna get in there. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Almost. Kind of get in there, peel it off. There we go. Could probably get in there with a Dremel tool or a sanding stick or something. I just remember before the top sheet to get in there and sand it down a bit. It's really the bottom. <laughs> All right. So note to self on the next wing, don't glue <laughs> R2 to the spar in the middle. And then it'll pop right out a little easier. Yeah, all right. Not live now. Am I back? Looks like I'm still live. All right, I see. Streaming, okay. My Wi-Fi is a little wonky. Uh, Ambroid glue. Yes, Scott, about, uh, if you can find Ambroid glue, I understand it's not really that easy to find anymore. But there definitely are alternatives, and you're not the only one, so look into it. I've got a thought, and I'm just gonna bug me until I decide what I'm gonna do. Oh, uh, what's this? What's this? I've got files. Still thinking about the uh, slot here. I'm just gonna file the sides a little bit. There we go. Yeah, that's what I can do. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll come in from this way with a small uh, square file. And uh, that'll work. Maybe you can see it better this way. So I'll just come in. When, even when it's sheeted, I can do that. I can come in through the end and file it down on all sides with a smaller. Not this one. It's too big. Uh, with a smaller file. And that'll be good. All right, I feel better now. All right, uh, what else? Upper wing spar. Measure and cut the upper wing spar from the leftover three. Make an extra eighth inch. What? The same wood? I can't do that. Oh, oh, it's not the full. Oh, look at that. Okay. So I thought the spar, the upper spar was going to go all the way across, but I just realized, no, there's only a slot, and it goes up to R4. Uh-huh. Oh, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. I'm going to move this out of the way here. All right. So basically, this upper spar will go here. I'm just going to put this here to make sure it stays. So this is nice, relatively tight. There we go. Nice, tight fit. I like that. And slide that in there. Ooh, look at that. So here's the upper spar. It only goes to the first four ribs. 
it looks like. Let me double check. Wait, not even that far. Good thing I looked. It only goes up to here. There you go. All right. Uh, we're spar. It's in there. It's a nice tight fit. Reading the instructions, seeing anything I need to do. It says to cut off about an eighth inch, so I'm gonna use that my razor saw. There we go. Leave a little nub. It's always good to leave a little nub so you have something to sand off later. You can always trim it. So when I put this together, I made sure I had a nice tight fit. So I probably can just use thin CA. It even says thin CA. And I do agree, I think I can get away with thin CA on the top spar here. I just want to double check that everything's good. It's nice and flush. Things look flat-ish. Everything's lined up. All right, you know, I'm just gonna wick some thin CA in there. Might take a couple of passes. All right. That is not going anywhere. So you got a nice little box for the wing joiner. I presume, I don't know if the wings are splittable or they get glued in half, glued together. I'm not quite sure, we'll find that out later. <clears throat> All right, the old school model works, 109 is coming together. Wing leaning edge, locate one of the 5 16ths by 36 square balsa strips. Hey, we're getting somewhere. Oh. Well, I'm going to find a balsa strip. It says 516. Is this 516? Where's my ruler? It is, 5 sixteenths. I actually have a wood gauge somewhere and I misplaced it. It's a nice little thing, it has little slots, you just stick the wood in, within a half a second you know what size it is. So that is a leading edge which will go here. Make sure everything's at some point. That's going to take some sanding. Uh, let's see what the instructions say. Fits in the diamond shape cutouts in the front before going to length. Sand a bevel into one end. of the strip shown here. The bevel should be roughly one inch long. You can take the point off the strip. This position will be tip of the wing. Bevel helps to correctly give and good clearance of your building surface. Ah, okay. So he's saying for the first roughly inch, last inch, I'm just going to eyeball an inch right around there. So I misplaced my ear, it is. I eyeballed an inch. It's right at an inch. Wow, my calibrated eyeballs. I may be 60th of an inch larger than an inch. All right. 
So it wants me to bevel with some sandpaper. Here we go, grab my uh, sanding thing. Oh, there it is. I had another sanding block. Where'd it go? It is not where it should be. All right, so. Ground good killers, the surface. <clears throat> when sanded, mark the length of the leading edge and cut it, leaving itself quirk. Huh. So we're gonna so it must be the sand off section. Why am I sanding this? Give clearance. Oh, on the bottom. Okay. Oh, I see. Says an edge. I think it's going to be more than that. Doing this because of the taper. It gets real thin at the trailing, at the leading edge, at the tip. So this allows, there we go. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Ah. Again, pretty clever, Mr. Bond. Where I broke his rib earlier, and quite repaired itself. Ah! There we go. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna put all that there and mark a little bit to. Cut. Could use my wood chopper. And then we glue it in. So the piece I beveled and sanded goes down towards the plans. And then yeah, it fits right nicely. So. Yeah, it fits okay. Checking the fit. Medium, there we go. All right, so we're gluing the leading edge on. the issue
it was okay. So we just gotta work or work our way down to each rib. Down to the end. Probably need to put some glue on the bottom as well at some point, but There we go, we got a trailing edge, leading edge, leading edge. All right. We got a leading edge. Wow. So that looks like all this major construction. Let me take all this stuff off of here. Look at that, a wing. Looks like everything's still pretty flat. Oh, there's a piece right here. Though. Keep it down. So, I'm just kind of looking at what's the next step. Looks like they're talking about wing sheeting. Ah, I need to do a time jack. How long have I been doing this? <laughs> uh, wow, I've been done for a couple hours already. Really nice start. All yeah, right, it's oh, it's almost past nine o'clock. Okay, so I think I will pretty much stop here for now since like the next step is to sheet the wings. I want to just for giggles take this off, take a good look at it. You can see what I've been doing. This is always nice. Check out the chat, anything going on? Sigmund, you guys. Chester's wood cement works good. Yeah. Hey guys. Kayak. I'm gonna build a kayak. That's cool. All right, so I'm going to take this off. Well, I like parchment paper. It's not perfect. It still sticks a little bit, but it's not terrible. Let me just kind of mostly pop it off. Since I got really heavy with the glue. So, yeah, pretty good. Didn't really leave anything. And here is the wing. This is the right wing half. Um, I'll need to go in and, like I mentioned before, really should... And some more glue to the bottom, since I really didn't catch those that well last time. It's easy to do everything nice on the top, but sometimes you don't forget the bottom. And I'm not going to use kicker. I'm just going to let it uh, cure naturally. To, so it'll soak in. Nicely. Um, check the joints. See how they are. I think these did well because they're all balsa. Kind of give it a once over. Now it'll be sheeted, so it's not super critical. Yeah, here's a. Looks like I kind of forgot to glue this very well. All right, look at that. The old school model works 109. We've got the right wing at this point is ready to be sheeted. So, um, well, so that's a whole nother process. So, I'll probably just double check things are smooth. I might go once over with some sandpaper, some light sanding before I sheet it. Uh, but it's nice, looks like a nice 
fairly strong, even without um, sheeting. It's not too bad. This wing box looks really beefy. At some point, this will be, have to be cut out. Uh, but hey, that's pretty good progress for just a couple hours of work. So far, really no problems. Going right together. I had one slight misunderstanding um, and one typo. So, so far, really good. And uh, guys, have any questions? Just again, double checking the glue joints. Might have to just touch up just a little bit. It looks good. Uh, I won't do the sheeting tonight. I think I've had enough for a while. It's a nice couple hour build session. Yeah, next step is to start sheeting everything. And then I gotta do the other wing. <laughs> Does it sit? No, it doesn't say. At some point, just repeat. Then the fuselage. Fuselage should be really, really simple. It's basically a box. Yeah, although there's some intric just some interesting stuff in there. There's the tail sections, motor, the whatchamacallit. It should be a relatively quick build. Here's a picture of it, sort of. Or is there a bigger picture in the front? Yeah, I mean, you see, it's very simple shape. Uh, shoot the wings. It looks like the fuselage is kind of just keys together. Uh, same for the tail. So I really thank you guys for joining me tonight. I uh, appreciate your uh, some good things in the chat. One guy made a good observation and corrected me for something. Gave me a little kick in the butt. Uh, sheeting is always fun. We'll have to put the sheets together and glue them on. Usually I use thick CA for the sheeting. It gives me time to work with it. Uh, so you can put it down and position it and throw some kicker in it. Sometimes I might use some thin CA on certain lot of uh, strategic points. It's interesting that the whole wing is sheeted. That's pretty neat. Uh, and there's some peg dolls. So anyways, I, did, I got up to step 15 tonight. I think that's good progress. Um, and I'm going to double check the chat. Guys, any last things? to yell at me before I go for tonight. I really appreciate you guys joining me tonight for this live stream. Uh, I know it's sometimes I'm a little quiet. Camera setup may not be optimal. What do we have here? Hey, guys. Well, thanks, e I Appreciate the comment. Uh, hey, I have no idea how to build a kayak, so I imagine I learned something from you. <laughs> uh, yeah, Greg. Okay, yeah, give me a call tomorrow. I look forward to talking to you. Got a couple questions for you. Thanks everybody for joining tonight. I don't know what to say. Let me put this back on. See my ugly mug oh, we're over here. Ah, there you go. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining me. I want to zoom out here. In my adventures in modeling and my auxiliary bench here. <laughs> uh, appreciate everything. I. Don't know what to say. I guess uh, thanks for joining me, and I will take one last quick. Looks like we're good. All right. On that note, everybody have a good night. I will talk to you sometime in the future. Um, actively working on the next videos and stuff. I got a couple of other neat reviews coming in and some projects I'm working on. And hopefully some personal stuff I get to over the summer. I picked up a bunch of stuff at Perry, so I need to get, get working on some of my own stuff. So... Thanks again. I appreciate everybody who joined the chat and everybody who watches the channel. Tell your friends, tell your enemies, tell everybody about the Hobby View channel. And also take a look at some of the site sponsors and links in the description of either this video or other any other video I post. Uh, sometimes I have discounts. Yes, uh, some companies have graciously offered discounts to um, certain uh, keywords and stuff through my site. So just look down there. And without any further ado, everybody, have a good night. Let's just double check in the stream here. I hope I hope I inspired you to build something. Sometimes give it a try. Start with something simple. It's a lot of fun. It's very cathartic, relaxing. Throw on some music. Throw on an old movie. Uh, don't watch a new movie because you'd be too paying attention to watch. Watch an old movie that you've seen 20 times. It makes great background uh, noise. You know what's going on. You don't have to look up every five seconds. Um, so it's always fun to accomplish something. It, uh, I always find building very um, 
therapeutic. I always have to build something. So the RC or uh, plastic models or other projects I'm working on. Uh, I've got a I've got a project car too. I got to get working on one of these days. Well, I actually been tinkering with it on and off. So uh, so that's going to keep me busy for <laughs> for a long while too. So uh, that's just me. Your mileage may vary. And so on. Without any further ado. Uh, Everybody, thanks, Michael. I will see you guys next time. Not sure if it'll be live or pre-production, but we'll see. Have a good weekend, and uh, thanks for everything.